Hello, I'm Pastor Timothy James Farrell, and I serve as the founding and lead pastor of a non-denominational church here in Bloomington Normal called The Tab. And I would like to invite you to join us for worship some Sunday morning at 10 a.m. The Tab is located at 1845 West Hovey Avenue in Normal, Illinois. I also want to invite you to visit our ministry website at thetab.tv. There's lots of wonderful resources and ministry there for you to take advantage of. Thank you for being with us today on this Tab Telecast. Here is this week's message. A series of messages this summer entitled God's Apocalyptic Puzzle. Someone asked this past week, Pastor Tim, what are you doing in that series? I said, well, it's pretty simple. We are bridging current events with biblical prophecy. We're making sense of what is going on in our world in light of what? In light of this book, in light of prophetic passages of Scripture uh, from Genesis to the maps, and uh, trying to, to make sense of it all as uh, pieces in a jigsaw puzzle. Because God does have a puzzle, and God has revealed to us in His Word certain pieces of the puzzle that are fitting together precisely right on time as He said they would. And so uh, God doesn't want us to be ignorant of those pieces. He wants us to know and uh, he's written these things in our word, but we've got to what? We've got to mind them out. We've got to study it. And it's been a rich and rewarding series. If you missed any of the messages, uh, they are, of course, archived for you on our YouTube channel and Facebook page. You can go back and watch them at your leisure and uh, get caught up with us because uh, things are coming uh, together uh, quickly. Amen. And uh, Jesus is coming back. So that's what we've been doing in this uh, in this summer series. Um, I want to ask a question today as we begin. What are some things you enjoy doing with your family? What are some things you as a family enjoy doing together? Well, there's a couple of things that that we uh, enjoy doing together as a family. One is uh, going on, you know, family vacations. We love to do that together as a family. We try to do that every every uh, every year at some point in time to get away and go on a vacation. We like to do that together. Uh, we like going to movies. How many of you like going to movies together as a family? We kind of do that. Um, we also like to play games uh, as a family, especially, you know, seems like on a Friday or Saturday night, we'll... Uh, turn the TV off, which is always a good thing, turn that thing off, and talk to one another, and sometimes we just play games. Now, some of the games that we like to play together as a family, you might like to play together with your family, things like, oh, I'm just thinking off the top of my head, Skip Bow, anybody play Skip Bow? Uh, uh, Uno, we like to play Uno. Clue, I don't know, I might be dating myself. A clue, I love Clue, I love the whole mystery game. Uh, how many of you ever play Pass the Pigs? We you ever Pass the Pigs? None of you have ever played Pass the Pigs. You need, okay, we got one person. You need to get online and get Pass the Pigs. That's a fun game to play. Another game we love to play together is a, a game called Jenga. How many of you ever heard of Jenga? All right. I've got, I've got a Jenga game. Uh, I don't know if you can see it uh, uh, from the camera here today. Uh, up on the table next to, next to the pulpit here is, uh, is Jenga. And for those of you that never played Jenga, Jenga's made up. I'm going to try to grab one here without causing the whole thing to fall, of little block wooden pieces like this right here that I'm holding in my hand. They're all stacked together, and uh, uh, the game is played, you know, with with you know maybe two or three or four or five people. You can play with as many people as you want, and uh, you begin pulling pieces out from the tower, right, one by one, and you're pretty careful about this. I mean, you've got to be real gentle and soft to the touch. Right. And uh, so the, the goal is to remove pieces, as many pieces from the Jenga tower, the Jenga puzzle as possible without causing it to collapse. And the player that causes the Jenga to the Jenga tower to come crashing down and collapsing upon itself is the player that loses. And then, you know, you build it back up and then, you know, until you're finally down to one player and they win the they win the game. That's how it's uh, that's how it's played. And uh, as I was praying about, as I do each and every week on what the Lord specifically wants me to share with you on uh, on Sunday mornings, I heard the word of the Lord came to me. It's never happened before in, in all my, you know, 21 years of life. And uh, <laughs> I wish that was true. No, I don't. No, no, no. <laughs> but, and uh, I heard God say in my spirit, Jenga. 
And that's a word, that's a weird word, right, from the Lord. And I thought, Jenga, what in the world? I mean, I, I, and he said, Jenga. He said, what's happening today in the world is just like the game Jenga. There are pieces being pulled out of, uh, of our country, of our culture, of our communities. Um, and, and it's just a matter of time before what? Before the collapse, before the fall. You know, many years ago, the word of the Lord came to me and said this, shook me to the core. He said, America will fall. America will fall. It's just a matter of time. We know that prophetically by reading the book of Revelation. Uh, and why? Because pieces, pieces in our country are beginning and have begun to be pulled out from time to time. And, of course, not just America, but other countries, right, in our world. I mean, even the, 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 the landscape of countries over the last hundred years have changed. I mean, from time to time, countries fall and what? Countries, countries rise. So uh, I want to look at today specifically... 12 pieces uh, being removed. Uh, some of these have been removed. Some of them are being removed in the process uh, from, from uh, people who don't love the Lord, who don't love God's Word, and specifically and, and contextually, obviously, we're talking about America, all right, in some way, shape, or form. But it's not just about us as a country, uh, but as, as a community, as a culture, and as, as, as Christian people. Can we, can we look at what, you know, say, what are the pieces? What are the pieces that are being removed from our country and from our culture and from the church today? I'm so glad you asked. So let's look at them. You got your tab notes. This is a good time to write them down. Uh, and these, well, these, of course, you could have written this message, by the way, if you've been paying half attention over the last few uh, years and decades. The first piece that was removed many years ago, uh, it's a pretty big one, prayer. Prayer. Prayer used to be paramount in our country. Uh, it wasn't abnormal for prayer to be, you know, at the beginning of, of uh, not just governmental events, but sporting events, uh, prayer in school. Some of us were are old enough to remember where we used to start uh, every single day. And I'm talking about public school, not private school, in prayer. That one's been removed, right? It's gone. Uh, here's piece number two, the Bible, right? Uh, we used to have pictures, images, let alone Bibles themselves, in places throughout our community. And uh, let me just say that, maybe about prayer and Bible. I'm not just talking about, obviously, out here. I'm talking about in the home, right? Parents used to lead their children in prayer. Matter of fact, and we were old school. They used to have morning devotions as families, they have, it was called morning tide, and then they have evening devotions called evening tide. See, most of you don't even have never even heard about this. It's because it's been removed. It wasn't too long ago, people, Christian families in America would begin the day, you know, eating their Cheerios and scrambled eggs and bacon. Mm, come on now. All right. And they would have devotion. They would have prayer together as a family before dad and mom went off to work, before the kids went to school. And then at the end of the day, they would what? They would have eventide. They would get out the word of God again. They would pray. They would do devotions. They would pray to get, they would pray together. That's been removed. Even in the church, let alone outside the church, pieces, right, being, uh, being, being removed. Uh, here's another one kind of in line with that, piece number three, the Ten Commandments, right? Isn't this interesting? They're removing what? The Ten Commandments, not just from our schools, not just from courtrooms, not just from institutions around our, our, our communities, right? They're taking them down. They've been taking them down for decades. And again, many of them are even removed from our homes. Well, here's a big one that just within the last few years has just shocked me. Piece number four, law and order. I mean, just law and order. What's right is right. What's wrong is wrong. Isn't it interesting today that what's wrong is right and what's right is wrong? It's being flipped. It's being removed. That piece is being removed, right? The people that are here, police officers, right? Judges uh, that are here to maintain law and order in our land, in our communities, are being vilified, are being demonized. I mean, my land, even parents trying to keep law and order, you know, structure, correction, bring discipline. Boy, try just, just, no, no don't, do, don't do this, don't do this, because we're already here. Try not disciplining your children. See how that goes. Now, how you discipline, that's up to you and the Lord. 
I don't care how you do it, but you better do it. This was just correction saying, hey, listen, we, you know, I love you enough to correct. We got to correct the course or you're going to go off the cliff. We're seeing the cliff. I mean, people, families, uh, individuals, children are falling off the cliff today. Metaphorically speaking, of course, because uh, there's no cliffs, not a whole lot of them in central Illinois here. Uh, metaphorically speaking, why? Because they've never been corrected. They've never been lovingly disciplined and, uh, is, and given law and order. You know what the Bible says about your God and my God? Our God is a God of law and order. He's a God of justice. Oh, God's a God of grace. Absolutely. He's a God of grace. But let's be real clear. He's sitting on a throne. And that throne is in a courtroom in heaven. Right? He's a judge. Our God isn't just a loving father. He's a judge to which all of us will one day stand before and give an account just as in a courtroom. And the books will be opened. That ought to cause our knees to at least knock a couple times. Right? And thank God for his mercy, for his grace, for those who've what? Gone before him and said, you know what? Before the court even begins, I'm guilty. I'm guilty of it all. Forgive me, Father, for I have sinned. And if you call out to God and you ask for forgiveness, he'll what? He'll give you forgiveness. If not, it's, it's judgment time. Law and order, right? But that's being removed. It's interesting. I mean, it's, and what happens when you remove law and order from, from any country and culture? I mean, you got chaos. You have anarchy in the streets. What have we seen over the last few years? Anarchy in the streets, right? It's a, it's a piece of what? Jenga, right? The Jenga, the Jenga tower being removed. Here's another one. Since you asked, what are the pieces? Piece number five, free speech. Isn't it interesting how, how freedom of speech, freedom of choice is being what? Is being removed little by little by little. You're being censored, right? I'm being censored. They tried to censor this gathering a few years ago, right? Can't do it. Right? So forth and so on. It's a, it's a, it's a piece of the puzzle. Here's one that was interesting. I've seen this, uh, and you have too. Piece number six, write this down. Common sense. <laughs> common sense isn't so common anymore, is it? I mean, just things like, man, that doesn't take even a, you know, eighth grade education to figure this one out. Just common sense. It just, I was like, you've got to be, you've got to be kidding me. We're going to go down that road? I mean, it, it just is being removed. Is being removed. And people that are, people like you, people like me, uh, you know, across America and around the world. This is a bigger picture than just us in America here. This is, this is happening globally, by the way. It's happened already in numerous countries, numerous countries around, around the globe. It's already happened. Freedom of speech, just common sense is being removed in terms of, uh, in terms of living. Piece number seven, history. Boy, when the enemy seeks to, to try to destroy a country, what do they start? They start removing the history. Now, listen, every country is, is, is um, there's no perfect country. There's no perfect leader. There's no perfect form of government. There's no perfect political party, right? Uh, we're all flawed. Why? Because we're all sinners. There's only one king who will establish a perfect kingdom, and it is coming. We're going to talk about it at the end of this message today. This message is going to end with a shout of a hallelujah, just so you know. i got to get us lost first before we get us saved. <laughs> By the way, that's the way to save people. you got to get them lost first. got to get them convinced, I am lost. Now I need help, right? Hallelujah. So history is being attacked and removed. And you know what? We need to be reminded of the good in our history, but we also need to be reminded of the bad. And we need to learn from it. I mean, there's some things that happened in America. We all know about it. We could talk about this. And this is another, oh, by the way, all of these are 12 messages. I could really go deep into it. But we learn from the wrong. Isn't that how it happens with us as individuals? Hopefully you learn from your mistakes. Sometimes our mistakes are our greatest teachers. I got one amen right there. Amen. Two amens. Sometimes, you know, I learn most by, you know, just doing it my way and learning that wasn't the right way. So we need our history, the good and the bad, to learn from and to grow from and not to repeat it. You remove the history and you don't know it, it's easy to repeat. It's easy to repeat. Amen. Uh, and then in line with this piece number eight, this big part of the, of the, of the Jenga puzzle today are the monuments. Right? They're removing monuments of what? History 
and again, this is just happening in America today. It's happening around the world because when you remove the monuments, you remove what? The symbols of what happened. And it's easy to go back and what? To fall prey and to be deceived into previous destructive behavior. Piece number nine, family. Boy, here's a big one. The family unit is being attacked today. The family unit. I mean, mothers aren't, aren't even called mothers anymore. They're called breeding people, birthing people. I mean, just the, the fa and I'm talking about, and by the way, God is the one that, that instituted the family. He's the one that defines all of the family units and everything like that and, and so forth and so on. Not us, not mankind, certainly not our culture or world. But the family unit is being attacked today. Piece number 10, I got to hurry because I got a long way to go, is individuals, even just individuals. By the way, the whole goal of all the stuff that's happening today in our culture is to remove individuality. It's to make us all one, by the way. They've already a binary people where women look like men and men look like women. We all look the same. They're removing our individuality. See, God placed us all in families. But my friend, listen, we're, we're individuals. God made us unique. There will never be, there never has been another person like you in the history of the world. There's been upwards of four. 14 billion people that have lived on planet earth 14 billion to this day there's never been a person that has your fingerprint and, and your dna that's how awesome our god is you are an individual you are his son you are his daughter and he loves you so much that if you were the only person on planet earth he would have come and died for you as an individual as an individual. And that's being attacked today. Individual identity. Well, who am I? What am I? Go to the Word of God. Go to the Word of God. He, the God that created you tells you who you are and who I am. Can I get an amen? Amen. 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 Hallelujah. I am preaching good, Brother David. All right. Peace number 11. Peace number 11. Christianity. Boy, it's happening right now for the first time again in, 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 our, in my lifetime. Christianity is being what? Persecuted. But this has been going on around the world in different countries for decades, for years, for hundreds of years, thousands of years, the last 2,000 years. Where Christianity is being what? Removed from country, being removed from, from culture. Christian values, Christian morals, Christian worldviews and philosophies and teachings being removed. And this is getting dangerous. And now we're in, we're in piece number 11. I mean, if, if I could start taking the pieces, a part of it, we're 11 pieces in, and the tower would be doing this. Shaking. Shaking. Are we ready for the last piece? God. Remove God from your family. See what happens. Remove God from your marriage. I think the divorce rate is upwards of 60% today. Before you get married, you better be sure who you're marrying. And if they don't have God in the center of their lives, don't do it. Amen. It's going to fall. Your marriage is going to collapse. I'm just telling you, it's hard enough with God. I mean, come on now. It's hard enough with God in it to stay married. I mean, divorce is never an option in our, in our, in our marriage, but death is. I mean, so one of us is going to die. I'm just kidding. Don't, come on now. Don't be sending me hate mail. All right. I mean, we need God. In our homes, in our families, in our marriage, in our relationships, in our friendships. We need godly friendships. Amen. Let alone God in our country. Remove God from it and the whole thing. I mean, it's just you can almost count it down. I mean, the whole, the whole country, the whole family, the whole system, the relationship is going to what? It's going to collapse. It's going to collapse. It's built on the, what Jesus said is built on what? Shifting sand. And we're called to build our lives what? As individuals, as families, as marriages on the solid rock. And who's the rock? Who's the rock? Jesus. He's the rock of ages. You build your life on Jesus. You build your marriage on Jesus. You build your country on Jesus, on God. That's the that's where it all, you know, when you when you build something, you build these buildings, whatever, what's the first thing these builders do? Do they put the roof on it? They don't start at the top. They start where? At the bottom, the foundation. You got to lay a solid foundation before you part, start putting up beams and drywall and, 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 and struts and headers and roof. And you got to have a strong foundation or what? It's just a matter of time before that building's going to collapse. 
and, and our foundation begins with what? Begins with God. Yeah, it begins with God. That's where it begins. All these pieces. As I look at our country, as our culture, even as families, not just in America, around the world today, have been pulled out here, there. And again, watch this now. It doesn't happen in a day. This didn't happen in a day. It takes weeks. It takes months. It takes years, sometimes decades for the enemy to come in. Just, just sneak in. See, he sneaks in. He sneaks into our home. He sneaks into our marriage. Just a little here, a little there. Just a little compromise. He wants to take 10 steps, but you say, oh, no, 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 you can't have 10. But, and he says, well, can I have one? And well, yeah, 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 you can have one. And then one turns to three, and then three turns to seven, right? And the next thing you know, your life, your family, your marriage, your country is what? It is in, in bad shape and starting to wobble. And it's just a matter of time before it what implodes and collapses upon itself. Now, ironically, ironically, you want to know who the one is that pulls the last piece that causes not just America to fall, but the world to fall. Are you ready for this? I, I, I mean, I, I didn't really see it this way until this past week when me and the Holy Spirit were talking about this. The last one to pull the final piece that brings the collapse of the entire world on itself after all of this stuff has been removed is God. God pulls the, the last piece and the piece collapses. What is that piece? If I could take it out here, I'm going to be very careful. There we go. And if, if it had it on here, he would say global rapture. Once the rapture happens, the whole world goes into chaos. It collapses upon itself. There's calamity. There's crime. There's chaos. Come on, we talked about it a couple a couple weeks ago. If you missed that message, you need to go back and, and, and read it on the rapture of the church. All the stuff begins to fall apart, and, and it begins to collapse upon itself. The global rapture is the next prophetic event that happens on God's end time timeline. And it's the very thing that causes the collapse of America and the collapse of every country and every culture and every community across and around this globe. It will be global impact. It will have a global impact. Now watch this. Last Sunday we talked about what's the first thing that happens after the collapse, after the whole thing falls apart. Arises what? A global leader. A global leader will arise. The Bible tells us his title. It doesn't tell us his human name, but his title is what? The Antichrist. The Antichrist will arise out of the ashes of the collapse of every society, every culture, and every country across America and around the world. Why? Because people will be looking for a leader to fill the void in the vacuum cleaner. And the, and the first thing he will do is he will bring back what? Security. He will bring back uh, structure. He will bring back um, uh, peace and harmony uh, to what? To the world. And the world will gladly give it to him. They will gladly just restore, restore this. I don't care how you rebuild it, but rebuild it. And he will rebuild it. He will, and we're going to look at that today. Can we look at the pieces that are going to be, that are being gathered today and specifically put in place after the collapse of, uh, of, of the world and the global rapture? Can we do that real quick? I'm going to do it anyway, so let's just go ahead and do it. Piece number one, the first piece after, again, okay, okay, I'm sorry, let me, I got to, I got to redo, okay, can we, can we do this here? All right, Brother David, I'm, I apologize for what's being ready to happen to your toes here, but, but all right, hold, hold on. I got it. I should have been doing this. I'm doing pretty good. All right, there's a piece there and a piece here being removed, right? Yeah. Man, I'm winning, the, I'm winning the game. Here we go. Oh, there we go. There we go. All right, there's the collapse. Pieces are, are, are lying on the ground, right? And the first piece in what? In God's apocalyptic puzzle that happens after the global rapture is what? The global leader will arise. The global leader will arise and, uh, and, and, and seek to explain what happened and where all these people went uh, and disappear to off planet Earth. The second piece um, that will happen is a global government will be established. A one world system will come. How many have ever heard of globalization, globalism? Come on now, raise your hand. 
right? It's a word that is being thrown around today more than ever. Why? Because it's coming. It's coming. They've got to prep the world for what they're wanting to do in the world. And there's going to be this global leader that will establish what? A global government. A global government. Uh, piece number three on the heels of the global government, guess what will happen? First thing you got to do is you got to restore what? Law and order. And how will they do that? Through a global military. See, there's sovereignty of all these countries that we, the world that you and I know today, will be no more. And that's a world that we can't even imagine. You mean to tell me, Pastor Tim, there'll be no more sovereign nations? There will be no more sovereign nations. There'll be one nation under the Antichrist. And you will pledge loyalty to, to, to him, right? Global government. And there will be a global military to what? To reinstitute, to reestablish what? Structure. Law and order. According to who? Not according to God. Not according to the world that you and I know even about today. According to who? The Antichrist. And, uh, and that's not, that's not going to be good. Uh, and the next thing he'll do is uh, piece number four. He will establish a global religion. We're going to go into depths of this in the next maybe couple weeks here. I just want to kind of give you the pieces. Global religion. There'll be not just a one world government, one world military. There'll be a one world religion to which everyone will have to bow down and participate in, or you will not only be persecuted, you'll be what? You'll be killed. And I'm not just talking about Christianity here. I'm talking about every major world religion, Hinduism, Taoism, Confucianism, Shintoism, Islam, Judaism, Christian. There'll be no more. And I taught major world religions for 13 years. Yeah. Know a little bit about it. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a world in, that well, I can't even imagine. There'll be, there'll be one religion led by what? One prophet called, the Bible calls him the false prophet. The false prophet. And uh, they, will, they will demand worship of who? Of the Antichrist, of the beast. There will be a capital city, global city, piece number five. The Bible tells us where that city's going to be. You want to know where it's going to be? Prophetically? In Babylon. Ancient Babylon. We know that, country, that city today is Baghdad. Have you ever heard of Baghdad? Yeah, Baghdad. Already, pieces are being put in place. If you study Baghdad out today, Babylon, are being what? Are they seeking to rebuild it. And, and the, so the headquarters, the capital city of the globe, will, during the seven-year tribulation after the global rapture will be where? Not New York City, not Washington, D.C., not London, not Paris, not Moscow. It will be where? In Baghdad. Well, how do you know that, Pastor Tim? Because the Word of God tells us. If it was going to be in Peru, I'd say it's going to be in Peru. My voice is rising. All right? The, there'll be a global city, capital city, all right, where, 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 uh, where all, uh, all the, the uh, dignitaries will, uh, will live and rule from. Piece number six, global community. Boy, we're already there. Isn't it, isn't it interesting how the world is getting smaller and smaller and smaller? I mean, it's amazing. We just did it this past summer, this past June, got on a plane, and within a few hours, we were halfway around the world. You want to go around the world today? You could almost do it in a day. You could probably do it in a day. You got enough money, buy a private jet and go. There, there matter of fact, the technology is so advanced, there's planes today that don't even need to land. They can circum circle the whole globe. Now, that's a long flight, and I don't want to be, I mean, my back hurt already just going across the ocean, Atlantic Ocean, let alone the globe. But you can do it today. I mean, it used to take weeks and months and years by boat if you were going to go around the globe. You can do it almost in a day today if you've got the fast enough jet. Global community. We're living in this global community, global uh, uh, citizenship. Piece number seven, write that down. Global citizenship. Every, every person on planet Earth will belong to this one world government. They will be one world citizens. Again, all the sovereign countries, all the sovereign nations that you and I know so much about today will what? Will no longer exist. Global citizenship. Uh, here's a big one. It's already kind of getting there. We're, we're beginning to hear about it. Global commerce. Global commerce. I mean, we're already there. We're buying stuff from Taiwan and China and, I mean, Africa and Europe. I mean, commerce, trade, right? Uh, along with, of course, obviously, uh, uh, the commerce is the currency. They're, they're doing away with what? The, the sovereign country's currencies. The dollar is being attacked today. They're wanting to replace it with what? Cryptocurrency. Everything's digital. Everything's online. It's coming. It will come. 
All right? All this stuff is just kind of foreshadowing of things to come what? in the future global global government uh, led by a global leader. Piece number nine, we're already here on this, global communication. You got a phone number for anyone in the world, you can talk to them today. You can text them. Uh, Snapchat them, right? Facebook, I mean, uh, Instagram, all the Twitter, all this. You can communicate with people anywhere in the world today if they've got the device to do it. We've got the, the satellites up in the sky to do it. Piece number 10, I got to go quickly, global censorship. Global censorship. Well, we're there already uh, in certain countries, right? Being censored. Again, free speech was what? One of the pieces of the puzzle that we're so used to. It's being removed and being replaced by what? Censorship. People behind the curtain, like the Wizard of Oz. Who are these people? Who are censoring us? Are they Christians? Are they God-fearing people? Absolutely not. They're people that hate God and hate America and specifically hate you and I as Christians that are censoring all of this stuff, right? It'll be global, global censorship. Uh, boy, here's a big one. This is going to cause you to swallow hard and deep. Piece number 11, global property. Private property will be no more. You won't own anything. Matter of fact, I can't remember who said it. I'll have to look this up this past week, this next week, and share it with you. One of the, the, the guys that are, that are on the global scene trying to put this together, their goal is to establish this by 2030. And he's quoted, said, you will own nothing and you will like it. You won't own a tractor. You won't own a trimmer. You won't own your house. You won't own your car. You won't own anything. Who's going to own it all? The government. The government will own it all and, 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 and oversee it all. How many of you are glad we're not going to be around for this? This is coming. This is, this is, this is what's going to come during the tribulation. Global, pro I mean, all this stuff. And then, of course, the 12th and final piece is what? Global persecution. We're already starting to see this in a little here, a little there. Uh, in America, certainly in other countries, it's happening at full scale. People are being imprisoned. People are being killed for what? Their faith. And not just Christian faith, other faith, as long as it doesn't line up with theirs. Here, those are the pieces. Once the collapse happens, that will be put together. You can see them. Can't you? We start starting to see the, the forecast of this in, on the horizon of humanity, all of these different pieces of the puzzle. Well, Dr. Jeremiah, uh, in his book, Where Do We Go From Here, said this, future events cast their what? Shadows before them. Future events, things that are going to come in full manifestation are casting their shadows before them. We don't see the, the fullness of these things right now, but we're seeing what? A piece here, a piece there, starting what? Starting to arise. And we can see it. That's why people say, well, how close do you think we are to the, to the global rapture? I think we're close, brother. I think we're close, sister. No man knows the day or the time. And I, I'm not going to set dates. We don't do that. God told us not to do that. But, but boy, I can, read, I can read the signs of the time just like you can. You know, how many of you know, you can probably tell when it's going to rain uh, just by looking at the clouds, by looking at the sky. You think, man, man, so there's a storm coming. I don't need to turn on TV and have a meteorologist tell me that. I mean, the meteorologist or my phone just kind of confirms what I think. Well, I can look at the clouds. And know it's going to rain. I can feel the wind and know it's going to storm. Well, we're looking what? We're looking at the landscape. We're looking at the world around us. And I said, my land, things are coming together for a tsunami. I mean, there's, there's a shaking coming. There's a collapse coming to our country, our culture, and our world. It's just a what? It's just a matter of time. Now, listen, my brothers and sisters, lest, 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 lest I be uh, in error and amiss here, this should not cause any fear in your heart. This message and these messages should not cause fear or cause you to be afraid or your anxiety level to bump up a, a degree. This should not happen because we're not going to be around for this. Again, the first piece of the puzzle that, that, that sparks all of this stuff is what? The global rapture. And I've got my little diagram here just to remind us. We're here on earth. The next thing happens is the global rapture. and We go where? We go to heaven. And then seven years of tribulation take place on earth, and all this stuff comes into fruition, and we are what? We are, we are gone. We're out of here. So I, I, I want faith uh, and, and comfort and consolation to fill each and every one of our hearts and lives during these messages. Now, if you're not saved, if you don't know the Lord, you, you probably should be scared. 
And this is a time to, by the way, if you're watching me online today, it's a time to get right with God. Because this could happen right now. It could happen this afternoon and we're gone. Right? And so, so, so it's time to get right with, uh, with the Lord. All right? In the, uh, in the wake of the coronavirus Former British, I just looked up some quotes this past week of kind of things to come. Even just in the last few years, British, former British Prime Minister, Gordon Brown vocally called for, quote, and I quote him, a temporary form of global government. Two years ago, the world leaders on the world stage were calling for a what? A temporary form of global government. And how many of you know, whatever you and I give to any government, it doesn't come back. It just doesn't. Whatever you give government, politicians, I don't care if it's America or around the world, you're not getting it back without what? Without a fight. Jason Fernando of uh, Investopedia said this about globalization. Globalization, this one world global system that's coming, led by a global leader, is a social, cultural, political, and legal phenomenon. Culturally, globalization represents the exchange of ideas, values, and artistic expression among cultures. Globalization also represents a trend toward the development of what? A single world culture. Global culture. Right? Now, how is this happening? I'm going to tell you how this is happening. And you'll hear it. The rise of a handful of powerful billionaires who are controlling some of the world's largest technological companies are shaping the way we think about globalization in the future. Big tech, notice this, is unifying the world in ways that transcends human government and dominates world economy. How many of you have ever heard, he who controls the media controls the world? They're controlling the narrative. They're brainwashing the narrative. They're trying to sell globalization. Won't this be, should be great? I mean, you just a global citizen and, and you can go here, there and everywhere. Uh, remove all the borders. Why? Because we're globalists. There are, there are no independent states. There are no independent countries. You want to go anywhere, you just go. Because you're a member of this global uh, government and this global world, right? Now, we know, again, the one single, um, or I should say, uh, look at this with me. De Dr. David Jeremiah said this in his book, Where Do We Go From Here? One single catastrophic event could trigger the dominoes, the Jenga, the Jenga puzzle, leading to what? G a globalized government quicker than we think. Now, what's that single event? What's that one single catastrophic event that's going to cause the collapse of every country, culture, and cause chaos, confusion, and calamity like never before. So the global rapture, right? That single event will, will cause everything to, to collapse. And that makes way for all of the, the pieces to be gathered and to be put in place. Can we go to the Word of God? Someone say, go to the Word of God, Pastor. Go to the Word of God. I wish this was new. I wish this message was new. I wish I could just say, boy, I really, I really I'm on the cutting edge here. You want to know how old this message is? 2,500 years. 2,500 years ago, God gave a vision to a little Jewish boy by the name of Daniel. Have you ever heard of Daniel? He wrote a book, one of the, the apocalyptic books, prophetic books of the Old Testament. In chapter 2 of the book of Daniel, he is given a vision of the prophetic world history past, present, and future. The rest of the book of Daniel, the subsequent book of Revelation written by John on the Isle of Pamos, and other uh, certain pericopes and passages throughout Scripture uh, fill in the specific details of Daniel's vision. So let's look at Daniel's vision. Daniel chapter 2, 31 through 35. He's given a glimpse of world powers and world kingdoms globally of of past, present, and future kingdoms to come. And it's a good thing you're sitting down, because uh, when, when I read this and we talk about it, it it's, it's amazing how everything has come to pass, just like God said it would. Daniel 2, 31 through 35. Read along with me. Your majesty looked, Daniel says, and there before you, talking about a vision and a dream that King Nebuchadnezzar had, there before you stood a large statue, a large statue of a man, enormous and dazzling statue, awesome in appearance. Awesome, another word, 
for awesome is terrifying. Terrifying in appearance. The head of the statue was made of pure gold, its chest and arms of silver, its belly and thighs of bronze, its legs of iron, its feet and ten toes, partly of iron and partly of baked clay. While you were watching, a rock was cut out, but not by human hands. It struck the statue on its feet of iron and clay and smashed them. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were all broken to pieces and became like chaff on a threshing floor in the summer. The wind, someone say the wind. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace. I was reading this this morning, and the Word of the Lord, Holy Spirit said, Hey, Tim. I said, Yes. He said, Guess who the wind is? I said, Well, who? The Holy Spirit said, That's me. <laughs> I love the way God talks to me. I love it. I laughed. I did. I, I said, oh, that's, that's just hilarious. He said, the wind's me. I said, well, of course it is. Because on the day of Pentecost, there came a wind from heaven, filled the house where they were sitting. Everybody was filled with who? The Holy Spirit. The wind, the Holy Spirit. I said, oops. I said, oh, yeah. There you are, Holy Spirit. The wind swept them away without leaving a trace. But the rock, someone say the rock. The rock that struck the statue became a huge mountain and filled the whole earth. Hallelujah. Now, in Daniel chapter 2, Daniel explains a dream by King Nebuchadnezzar of the Babylonian Empire. And its head was gold, chest and arms of silver, bronze stomach and thighs, and its legs were iron. And his toes, his feet were iron and partly clay. Nebuchadnezzar saw a rock quarry by an invisible hand, that's the hand of God, that flew through the air and struck the statue at the toes, at the feet. That's very important. It then toppled and broke into a million tiny pieces and was swept away by the wind like chaff. The rock began to grow and grow and grow until it encompassed the whole globe and, and the entire earth. Now, how many of you want to know what Daniel's uh, vision means. Yes. How many of you want to know what Daniel's vision means? Past, present, and future for global kingdoms. All right, here we go. The head of gold. What did the head of gold represent? The head of gold represented the Babylonian empire of Daniel's day. The global leader, the global empire led by one man, King Nebuchadnezzar, is represented in the head of gold. All right, this is this Daniel saying, this is, this is, this is the current kingdom the current global empire of which everybody is what? Is a member and a citizen of, is represented in the, in the head of gold. The chest of silver, I'm going to go quickly, all right? The chest of silver with its two arms represented the next global empire, global kingdom, the Medo Persian Empire. The Medes and the Persians defeated who? The Babylonians. You can learn this in your history class at school if they haven't removed history. <laughs> Because it happened. The Medes and the Persians conquered the Babylonians. How many of you have ever read the book of Esther? How many of you have oh, I just love Esther. She's so sweet. She's so precious. What a mighty woman of God. And who was in power during the days of Esther? The Medes and the Persians. Right? And where was the capital city of the Babylonians and the Medes and the Persians? Baghdad. <laughs> the stomach and thighs. See, here's the thing. God's got this puzzle, and he's, put, he's putting it all together. It all fits together, right? Stomach and thighs of bronze represent who? The Greek empire. Who, who defeated? What was the global empire that defeated the Medes and the Persians? The Greeks. And who led? Who was the global leader of the Greek empire? Alexander the Great. Have you ever heard of Alexander the Great? Alexander the Great was the leader of the, of the Greek empire. And it's represented in what? The stomach and thighs of bronze. Talking about sub, uh, subsequent uh, sequential empires on a global scale. Legs of iron. Legs of iron are represented by who? By what empire? The Roman Empire. And what global kingdom ruled the world, the known world, during the days of Jesus? The Caesars of Rome. The Roman Empire. Now, when you go with me, and I say when, not if, when you go with me to Israel... The next time Pastor Tim goes, we will go to Israel. And guess what you will find when you go to Israel? You will find Jewish 
uh, artifacts and ruins, and you will find Roman artifacts and ruins. Because the Romans built tons of stuff, amazing amphitheaters. I mean, just tremendous buildings. And they're still there today and, and during, the, during the Roman Empire period. Okay, that was the next uh, uh, global kingdom. After the Roman Empire fell, watch this now, there were no more global kingdoms. There were sovereign countries. And that's where you and I live today. We live in sovereign nations, sovereign countries. Now, there have been attempts, listen to this, there have been attempts by certain military men that have tried to rule the world and conquer the globe, just like Alexander the Great, just like the Babylonians, the Medes and the Persians, just like the Caesars of Rome, but they failed. Can I name one? Adolf Hitler. Adolf Hitler tried to institute a global empire, a global kingdom of which everybody would be what? A German speaking one language. German. No secret. That's what his ultimate goal was, was to rule the world. And that's why, again, during the days of, uh, come on, some of you know some people that were living in the 30s and the 40s. They thought Adolf Hitler was who? The Antichrist. They were like, man, I mean, he's here. And I, I understand that. I probably would have thought too. But he wasn't. Thank God that the, the good Lord moved upon the United States of America and our allied forces. And we what? We defeated him. We defeated him. All right? So, so until all of these are, are, are passed. Now, when Daniel was getting this vision, there was only the, the head of gold. Every other kingdom was in the future. How many of you know it came to pass just like Daniel saw it? Just like the Holy Spirit told Daniel it was going to happen, it happened. Now, he wasn't given the name of these kingdoms. He was given the image of, and what they represented. Are you ready for the next global empire kingdom? The feet and the toes. The feet and toes of iron and clay are represented by who? The Antichrist kingdom. And the coming kingdom that will rule the world, global government, global military, global economy, global commerce, global culture, after the global rapture. All right? And we know from the book of Revelation that there will be 10 leaders. G10. You ever heard, hear, heard that phrase, G10 right now? The global 10. The global 10. There will be 10 specific leaders that will rule the world. Three of them in Daniel... Uh, Oh, gosh, I'm not going to give you the chapter. But anyway, in the book of Revelation, the Bible tells us, and I think even in Daniel, that three of them will be what? Defeated, and out of the three will rise a little horn, and he will rule them all. That's the Antichrist. Okay? So, so the ten toes represent the coming Antichrist kingdom and empire that will rule the world for seven years. But then, someone say, but then. But then. Someone in Facebook land say, but then. But then. Amen. Amen. But then the rock shows up. Hallelujah. You want to talk about a rock show? You want to talk about a rock star? There's a star coming from heaven. His name is Jesus. Hallelujah. I'm about to get born again again. The rock of ages. Write that down. The rock is represented by who? Jesus Christ. And when he comes back, where? In the return right here on the board. When Jesus comes back. He's coming back with you and with me and every saint. We've been resurrected. We've been glorified. We've got our resurrected bodies. And he's coming back not on a donkey, but on what? A white horse. Now, again, me and, me and Brother Brown here this morning, we're talking about the symbolism of that. Uh, when, a, when a ruler came on a white horse, he came as a military soldier and general. The white horse was reserved for who? The general of the army. But people that came in peace would ride a donkey. Jesus on, on the Palm Sunday came into Jerusalem, not riding on a white military stallion, and was going to enforce Rome and defeat the Roman Empire and set up his kingdom. He didn't come riding on that white stallion. He came riding on what? A donkey. Matter of fact, that donkey, I, I, I think it must have been pretty small. It was a small donkey, a little colt of a donkey. I mean, come on, have you ever seen a colt donkey? Little tiny things, right? And he got on it to represent, I'm not coming right now to conquer. I'm coming to save. I'm coming in peace. 
But when you read the book of Revelation at the second coming, the rock isn't coming. Jesus isn't coming riding on a little peaceful colt of a donkey. He's coming riding a horse, a military horse. Why? Because he's coming to take over. He's coming to destroy and demolish every kingdom and every uh, uh, military that is what? That is not his own. The Bible calls that the Battle of Armageddon, and that happens in the Valley of Megiddo, and we were there. I mean, it's amazing. 75 miles long, 25 miles wide. And there'll be so many military people there on the, on the Battle of Armageddon, the, the, the blood will be bridal high. The Bible, that's in the Bible, bridal high. When does that happen? When does the rock come to destroy the Antichrist kingdom and establish his kingdom of global peace, harmony, and justice? At the return. At the return. And you and I are what? We're riding horses behind him. <laughs> Hallelujah. And we get a front row seat to this thing. I can't wait. Hallelujah. Now, I wish we were coming in Corvettes, but we're not. We're coming on horses, all right? <laughs> Can I read you this last scripture? And anyway, I promise we're going to pray. Daniel 2, 45 through, 44 through 45. Look at this with me. Daniel's vision goes on. In the time of those kings, the God of heaven will set up a kingdom. I love this. That will never be destroyed. Woo, when Jesus comes back, he's going to set up his eternal kingdom, eternal kingdom, eternal kingdom, never to be destroyed, nor will it be left to another people. It will crush, someone say crush, all those kingdoms and bring them to an end. But it will itself endure forever. This is the meaning of of the vision of the rock cut out of the mountain. I'm getting excited. But not by human hands. In other words, no human is going to do this. God's going to do it. God cut the rock out. And it's His Son, Jesus Christ. A rock that broke the iron, the bronze, the clay, the silver, and the gold pieces. Hallelujah. The great God has shown the King what will take place in the future. Now, I underlined this last sentence because I want to end here. The dream is true. Someone say the dream is true. The dream is true. And it's interpretation trustworthy. My friends, what Daniel by the Holy Ghost prophesied 2,500 years ago has come to pass exactly as he saw it. Exactly how he, how he saw it. And what has happened, we know has happened. And, and, and the last two kingdoms, the kingdom of the Antichrist and the kingdom of Jesus Christ, are yet to come. And how many of you are willing to put, put your, 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 your money on this? It's going to happen. I mean, you, it's a sure thing. It, you, it's going to happen. The, the previous five kingdoms have already come and gone, just like Jesus said, God said, the Holy Spirit said, and the last two are going to come. The Antichrist is going to rule the world. There will be a global government made up of global citizens and a global commerce. It is going to happen after, someone say after, after. the global rapture of the church. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Put your hands together. <laughs> Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're saved? Aren't you glad you have the blessed hope of heaven? Amen. And when Jesus Christ comes back, that rock is going to destroy every kingdom. There's only two kingdoms, the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. He's going to destroy the kingdom of darkness, which is that Antichrist kingdom, and establish, I love this word, forever. Someone say forever. Forever His eternal kingdom. Hallelujah. We win. Jesus wins, and Jesus is going to stand on the earth, and he's coming back to the Mount of Olives. Hallelujah. And you can go there. You can go there. And I'm looking forward to going back there with you, with you. The dream is true. The interpretation is trustworthy. But let me say this. The giver of the dream is true. Who's the giver of the dream? God. The giver of the dream is true, and his prophet is trustworthy. What God said prophetically would happen 2,500 years ago has happened. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. And what God has said is yet to happen, is going to happen, it's going to happen. And we, not, we need not fear. We need not fear. We know whom we believed. God's given us the book. Why? So we can interpret the times, the signs of the times, and so that we can get ready. 
so that we can be about the master's business. And we can witness to our world, witness to our brothers and sisters, our family members that don't know the Lord and say, listen, it's time. It's time to get right with Jesus. It's time to get right with God. It's time to start being about, uh, being about what God wants us to be about. Amen. And, uh, and to take as many people with us as we can. That's the goal. That's why, again, we're doing phase two. We're building phase two. We're expanding. Why? To reach more people for Jesus. We want to take as many people with us to heaven as we can. As we can. We don't want anybody left around here to go through the seven years of hell. Uh, seven years of tribulation on the earth. That's why we're doing what we're doing. And we're going we're gonna to try to do it the best we can. Amen. Now, if you're here today in this room or you're watching online and you're not right with God, today is a wonderful day to get right. Today is a great day to get right with God and to invite Jesus Christ into your heart and life. Make him Lord of your Savior. Get that finished. Get the peace of God ruling and reigning in your heart and life. And get the fear and anxiety out. Amen. Bow your heads with me. Let's close our eyes. If you're here today and you would say, Pastor Tim, I need saved from my sins. I am not right with God. I fear I'll be left behind. I fear that I will go through the worst seven years in world history. Help me. Help me get right with God. I'll do it today, my friend. If you're watching online and you don't know the Lord, I want to invite you to pray this prayer with me and every person here at the tab this morning. Pray it with, with judgment day honesty. And judgment day integrity. Say these words out loud and pray them to God in heaven. Say these words. Dear God, Dear God I, come I come before you this morning. A sinner in need of your grace. Forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart and life. Be my Lord and Savior. And help me live for you. And help me be a witness for you. All the days of my life until you come for me in the rapture of the church. This I ask and pray in Jesus' name, the rock of ages. Amen and amen and amen. Would you put your hands together? Hallelujah.